hard, it's hard to go against him. He's never lost. Round one underway, brought to you by Dragon Energy. In the blue, Brendan to send in Lazar. In the white, Drickus still knocks Duplessis. But just don't forget, Drickus is a master of game plan strategy. He analyzes his opponents with his head coach, Morny Fisser, so effectively. He's come up against bigger and stronger opponents in the past, but always out-strategizes them. Such a good MMA IQ has to proceed. Some wise men have said there are levels to this East. I'm not going to say the real word. I get fined. That being said, Drinkus Super C has fought all around the world. Is he on another level? Or can he be knocked out just like Gareth McClellan? Both lads coming in with huge amounts of power. I mean, both lads have great right hands that have been the end of their opponents in the past, but to see it's been sold, it's the result was very good for him. turned out there, he didn't get much of it, but he's not afraid to throw it. And one of the most transcendent stars in the history of this company. Really Brendan sees it, but popped right back up to Drickus. A trip in this, now listen, we talked about this, Simon. Yeah, we did. If he gets dragged into a stand-up war, back and forth, rock em, sock em, robots, that is Lazar's best chance to win this entire fight. But we've seen Drickus rocked sure before. This is good, though. I mean, don't be wrong. He's been rocked, and he's gone for the takedown and submitted his opponent even when he's been wobbled. Well, we remember what he did to Solich yeah. for KSW. Yeah, Off his back foot, left hand, knocked him out. I will not sell the stand-up of Drinkus Short. Both lads really swinging those roundhouses to the flanks and following up with the lefts. Brendan's got a beautiful left hook. He kind of modifies the uppercut, so it's almost like a hook that's coming up through underneath your guard, but it's got a lot of lateral movement when it hits the jaw. Brendan's starting to check that leg kick now from Duplessis. You know, in different lives outside of the hexagon as well, you talk about the family of Brendan Lazar and what his life is outside of the hex. A full-time fighter is Trigus Duplessis traveling the world. They're, they're in different points of their life, but that has to be remarked on. Yeah. You've got a different type of motivation. I know as soon as my daughter was born, as soon as your daughter was born, you had a new responsibility that meant more than anything else in this world. And you got to believe that's in the head of Brendan Lazar in this matchup. Both guys are exchanging for him very, very close. And Brendan does have some very deceptive footwork. He's got a very good takedown defense, but man, he's got a huge gas tank. But that gas tank enters pretty quickly when you come into one of still knocks his right hand, and that's why they can still knock. He will put you to sleep. Look at the size difference between the two. He almost thinks about the jumping knee. Jacobs is so big at middleweight. <laughs> Isn't he? I mean, yeah. He is huge at middleweight. He is. And then again, he took the belt, what, from Yannick Bahadi, who was even bigger than him. Yeah, fair enough. How the heck Bahadi ever got there in the middle of it? No idea. <laughs> he was massive, wasn't he? <laughs> and that left leg kick. Drick is really targeting the left, sorry, the right leg of Lazar. Oh, and there it is. Watch out. It's these, it's it's these exchanges back. right here that are going to decide this fight. Fender coming back with a leg kick of his own, taking away that leg leg also. I'm really surprised that Drick is, is it exploiting maybe going to the ground at yeah. this point. Yeah. I, 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 I'm also very surprised. Brendan's got a pretty decent, legit ground game. We saw it in the first season of the fighter. And goodness, we've seen him take a serious shot. I mean, even when he bust his nose up, and Brendan was still able to cut it out for the last 10 seconds and win the entire season with a broken nose. Incredible. Keep in mind, folks, you're watching home. There are a lot of eyes on this matchup. Oh, he's going to watch out. There's his own. He's trying to finish as fast as he can. Oh, there he is. There he goes. He's slowed to him. He's got it. 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 Kicks the middleweight belt of the EFC. Still Max is still champion. And Brenda's not happy with himself. He's walking around the hex. I don't think he's happy with the stoppage, but he taps. That is the that GOAT. slapped it on. Is that the GOAT? Oh, he's the GOAT of the middleweight division, if not the history of the EFC. And there's been some veterans in the sport, but that was absolute cracking. He shot Brendan, put him on his back, slapped on the choke. Is he the GOAT in his mid-20s yeah, in is. the EFC? Oh, well, he was the earliest, youngest K1 champion 
of the world and we coming got, from South Africa. And we got a man that can argue for the go right next to us. I mean, and he's right there in the mix. That is what it's all about. This guy's transcendent. I truly hope that we get to see Trickers to proceed to defend this belt again next year. And Brendan Lazar work his way back to the top of the division in the middleweight division. But it was that left and the right that put him down. A couple of ground strikes that followed up. The referee looking very, very closely, but slapped on that kitchen immediately. And Brendan knew he was done. It was in so, so deep. It's that left that came round the side. It was a right straight, followed by a left hook that came round Brendan Lazar that put it that put him down and we've seen a beautiful guillotine choke just of that style from Dickens to in the past he is so quick when he slaps it on beautiful submission so many he's got in his career and that means so much to him the first time he's fought in his home crowd here in Pretoria and the, what a fantastic victory and a great show of respect from both gentlemen. Absolutely superb. Let's get this official now and send it up to my colleague, Cyrus Fees. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Brad Black calls a stop to the contest at four minutes, 15 seconds of round number one. Your winner by tap out to the guillotine choke. And still, EFC middleweight champion, Trickis still not to Plessis. What, what an incredible fight. Pretoria, I'm here with your own homeboy, Trickus Lepassi. A great opponent, great show of respect, but you've got to be feeling pretty high right now. <laughs> Pretoria, the year is in time, baby! Woo! No, absolutely. Thank you to every single person. This is, I promise you, this is a highlight of my career, fighting in front of my hometown. The crowd, the people, you guys are incredible. Leading up to this fight, all the incredible, uh, just the motivation I got from fans, from people just saying they can't wait for the fight. They're watching, I inspire them. It's awesome to hear, just by hearing that, you guys inspire me. All of you that's filling out these seats, this is absolutely amazing. This is the best night of my life of my fight career as this fight. Thank you very much. I hope we get to see you again fight in 2020, my friend Rickus. Absolutely. Uh, you know, uh, I'll go back to the management team, see what's up, see what's coming next. But, uh, you know, I know that light heavyweight division is looking a little bit thin. And this one shoulder of mine is getting a little bit cold. Winter is coming and I need two belts on these shoulders. So let's give you that light heavyweight belt. Woo! Patoric, give it up for your very own. Trickers, still not stupacy.